This is no time for fun and games, or is it? We're on problem number 61 of Physics GRE GR0177. An electromagnetic plane wave propagating in vacuum has an electric field given by E equals EO cosine quantity KX minus WT and is normally incident on a perfect conductor at X equals zero, as shown in the figure above. Immediately to the left of the conductor, the total electric field E and the total magnetic field B are given by which of the following? So for a perfect conductor, the wave is completely reflected. Completely reflected means the positive x direction and then the minus x direction for the motion. Now use the right hand rule. Uh, so the original E field uh, cancels out the positive y and minus y direction while the magnetic fields add the positive z and positive z direction. So we would need a zero E field and a positive non-zero B field. And that is answer. C. Number 62. A non-relativistic particle with a charge twice that of an electron moves through a uniform magnetic field. The field has a strength of pi over 4 tesla and is perpendicular to the velocity of the particle. What is the particle's mass if it has a cyclotron frequency of 1600 hertz? So we know frequency f equals bq over 2 pi m where m equals bq over 2 pi f. So m equals the quantity pi over 4 times 2 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. That whole quantity divided by 2 pi times 1,600 hertz. And the electron charge is on the list of constants provided by the ETS. And the particle in this problem has twice that amount of charge. So m is going to equal 10 to the minus 19 divided by the quantity 4 times 10 to the 3. And that equals 2.5 times 10 to the minus 23 kilograms. And that is answer A. Number 63, the distribution of relative intensity I of lambda of blackbody radiation from a solid object versus the wavelength lambda is shown in the figure above. If the wind displacement law is constant, uh, if the wind displacement law constant is 2.9 times 10 to the minus 3 meters times Kelvin, what is the approximate temperature of the object. Well, Wine's displacement law, lambda peak, equals B over T, where B is Wine's constant, which is 2.9 times 10 to the minus 3. So T equals B divided by lambda peak, where lambda peak is at about 2 micrometers, and that equals 2 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. Again, as provided by the ETS on the cover sheet. So our temperature T is going to equal 2.9 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 2 times 10 to the minus 6 equals about 1,500 Kelvin, and that is answer D. Number 64. Electromagnetic radiation provides a means to probe aspects of the physical universe. Which of the following statements regarding radiation spectra is not correct? The nucleus is about 10 to the minus 15 to 10 to the minus 14 meters, and you need light with this wavelength to probe these distances. Only the gamma ray region of the electromagnetic spectrum has a wavelength short enough, well, less than 10 to the minus 12 meters, to probe the nuclear structure. So therefore, answer A must be false. Number 65, this is a fun one. Einstein's formula for the molecular heat capacity C of solids is given above. At high temperatures, C approaches which of the following? Let x equal h nu divided by kt, where f of x equals 3kna times the quantity x squared e to the x. g of x equals the quantity e to the x minus 1 squared, and C can equal f of x over g to the x. Now apply L'Hopital's rule and take the derivative of f of x and g of x. f prime of x divided by g prime of x equals 3k na times the quantity 2x e to the x plus x squared e to the x divided by the whole quantity 2 times the quantity e to the x minus 1 times e to the x. And that equals 3k na times the quantity 2x plus x squared divided by the quantity 2 e to the x minus 2. Now we're going to need to apply L'Hopital's rule, rule one more time since the denominator goes to zero at x equals zero because e to the zero or 10 to the zero, et cetera, is going to equal one. So f prime prime of x divided by g prime prime of x equals 3k na times the quantity 2 plus 2x divided by 2e to the x equals 3k na times the quantity 1 plus x, that whole quantity divided by e to the x. Now we can evaluate this at x equals zero. 
um, which about equals H nu over KT for high temperatures. So at X equals zero, three KNA times the quantity one plus X divided by E to the X simply equals three KNA times one. And so that would be answer D. Number 66, a sample of radioactive nuclei of a certain element can decay only by gamma emission and beta emission. If the half-life for gamma emission is 24 minutes and that for beta emission is 36 minutes, the half-life for the sample is. And so the half-life resulting from the rate of both decays combined is simply equal to the first rate times the second rate divided by the quantity of the first rate plus the second rate. So let's just plug in our numbers, 24 times 26 divided by the quantity 24 plus 36 equals, and we're going to have to do some algebra here, 864 divided by 60, and a little more algebra gets us to 14.4 minutes, that is answer D. 67, the uranium-238 nucleus has a binding energy of about 7.6 MeV per nucleon. If the nucleus were to fission into two equal fragments, each would have a kinetic energy of just over 100 MeV. From this, it can be concluded that, so the initial binding energy Ui equals 238 nucleons times the quantity 7.6 MeV per nucleon. Um, and so Ui is going to also equal 1,808 MeV and UI minus UF equals the final kinetic energy. A binding energy is negative though, so minus UI minus negative UF is gonna equal the final kinetic energy. So minus UI plus UF equals kinetic energy final. And we have two equal fragments of the uranium-238, um, and that's gonna result in two fragments with 119 nucleons each, each having 100 MeV. So minus 1,808 MeV plus U final equals two times the quantity 100 MeV. So UF equals 139 times the um, EV per nucleon plus the quantity 139 times EV per nucleon equals 2,008 MeV. So 238 nucleons uh, times the electron volts per nucleon equals 2008 MeV and X equals 8.4 MeV per nucleon. So the two fragments of 119 nucleons each must be bound by 8.4 MeV per nucleon. And so that would be answer E. Number 68, when beryllium with seven neutrons and four protons transforms into lithium with seven um, neutrons and three protons, it does so by. And of the answers, only electron capture results in proton number decreasing by one. The proton number changed from four to three. A proton turns into a neutron. Electron number also changed from four to three. So a neutrino must also be created to preserve lepton number. Finally, charge must be preserved. So there you go, there's the reaction, proton plus electron. It's gonna give you our neutron plus our neutrino, and that is going to be answer E. Number 69, blue light of wavelength 480 nanometers is most strongly reflected off a thin film of oil on a glass slide when viewed near normal incidence. Assuming that the index of refraction of the oil is 1.2 and that of the glass is 1.6, what is the minimum thickness of the oil film other than zero? Since we're viewing normal to the surface, we can just use the thin film interference equation where 2nd equals m lambda, where m equals 1, 2, 3, dot, dot, dot. So the thinnest film would be for m equals 1. So 2 times 1.2d equals 480 nanometers. So d equals 200 nanometers. That is answer B. Number 70. Light from a laser falls on a pair of very narrow slits separated by 0.5 micrometer and bright fringes separated by 1 millimeter are observed on a distant screen. If the frequency of the laser light is doubled, what will be the separation of the bright fringes? Uh, so for light, we know lambda equals C over F. And we're going to look at our diagram provided here. Again, hyperphysics has such a wealth of knowledge. So the bright fringe separation about equals M lambda 
big D over little d. So then the bright fringe separation about equals mc big D divided by the frequency times little d. Well, if the frequency is doubled, mc big D divided by two times the frequency times little d uh, is gonna equal our bright fringe separation, which is half of the initial bright fringe separation. So our initial bright fringe separation was one millimeter. Divide that by two, that equals 0 0.5 millimeters, and that is answer B. Okay, I will see you in the next set of 10 solutions.